Hey guys, Miss Wynn here. It's gonna go over our similar figures nodes today. All right, so first up, what are similar figures? Similar figures are the same shape, but can be different sizes. So it's kind of like the difference between a model car, like a little toy car, and a real car. The little model is the same shape as an actual car, it's just smaller. Okay. So since two shapes are similar, instead of using the equal sign, we use this symbol. So this symbol shows that two shapes are similar. So for example, if we have this phrase here, you would read this out loud as triangle PQR is similar to triangle TUV. Okay. So when you read this part that I bolded, if you read it out loud, you would read it as triangle PQR is similar to triangle TUV. Similar figures have proportional side lengths, proportional side lengths, I don't know why I wrote that part so small, proportional side lengths, and congruent angle measures. Means that their side lengths, when you have two figures that are similar to each other, their side lengths are proportional, but the angles are congruent. If you think about a square, right? A square has four angles that are 90 degrees. Now, if we stretch this square, the angles are still 90 degrees. So that kind of shows you that even when you change the scale of a shape, the side lengths will change, but the angles all stay the same. Because if the angles change, that shape wouldn't look like that shape anymore. Okay. So corresponding side lengths are what we're working with. Okay. So knowing which sides correspond to each other, knowing which sides correspond with each other, it's bigger, is very important when working with similar figures. Okay. Sometimes it's tricky to identify corresponding sides because the shape has been flipped, flipped or turned around. Okay. You can find corresponding sides by looking at the angles and the letters. Okay. So let's look at some examples. So we look at these two magenta pink shapes here, well, it's a lot easier to tell which sides are corresponding, okay? So corresponding sides are the ones that are the similar sides to each other, okay? Remember when we did corresponding angles with parallel lines cut by a transversal? The corresponding angles were the ones that were in matching corners. So we're kind of doing the same thing here. The difference is that you have to be careful because sometimes in the second shape it's been tilted or something. So it's not always going to be like upper left, upper left. So for example, if you look at this side on the first figure. Let's call this figure one. Let's call this figure two. Okay. So on figure one, this side, BA, we need to figure out which side it corresponds to over here, right? Well, uh, BA is the shortest side. Like, this side does not correspond to this side because that's not the same part at all, right? So that's what we're talking about with the corresponding sides are the ones that go together. So here it tells us so side BC, this is BC here, so side BC corresponds to side FG. So we can see those are both the longest side. So these are corresponding sides to each other, right? So the way we normally show that two sides correspond is by using these symbols like this. So both of these have one little dash showing these are the two sides that go together. So they want to know which side corresponds to side CD. Let's use two stripes for CD, okay? Well, 
If FG and BC are the same, CD is the side that goes vertically up and down. You know, it's straight line vertically. So if we look at this shape 2, the one that matches that is GH. So you would say side CD corresponds to side GH. Last one, we have side FE, so it's over here. So side FE is from shape 2, so we need to see which side on shape 1 does FE go with. Well, so far, these seem to be in the same relative position. So if FE is on the left, then that means that it corresponds to the left side here too, which is BA. Okay. But sometimes you have shapes where it's harder to tell which sides are corresponding, okay? Because if we look at this one, this next shape, so here's shape one, here's shape two. At first glance, you might think, okay, shape two is just shape one, but it's been shrunk and it's been tilted. But the thing is, we don't know if it's really been tilted or if it's been flipped horizontally, like flipped across this line like a mirror image. Because if you draw a line down this figure, it's almost symmetrical. Not quite, but it's symmetrical enough that it's kind of hard to tell. So in these situations, we can create a key by writing our own table to show what sides and what angles are corresponding. Okay, So we can use the letters here in the corners. So if we look at shape number one, the first letter, if we're going in alphabetical order, so go back to elementary reading, you know, first letter of the alphabet on shape one is the letter A. The letter that comes after A is B. Now we just keep going. A, B, C, D, E, F. Because this is a hexagon. So there's six sides. A, six sides, six angles. A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay. So to figure out which parts are corresponding, which angles are corresponding on shape two to these ones on shape one, we need the first letter of the alphabet here on the right. So we have all these letters, you know, K, J, I, H, G, L. Of these, the one that comes first in alphabetical order is G. C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. You know, sing the alphabet song if you have to. Well, so when we write that, now all of these that are stacked on top of each other, these are all corresponding angles. Okay, so that means that if you're coming up with corresponding sides, you can also use this table. So we can use this like a key, and I'll show you how. Okay, so let's go with the first one. We want to know AB corresponds to what? So let's use a color. So AB is here. So we are looking, its corresponding side is going to be right below it on the table. It is GH, it's right below. And it's not. It's GH, it's not going to be IJ, because IJ is not below AB. So this is stacked perfectly, okay? Let's look at another one, HI. Here's HI. So its corresponding side is going to be right on top. It's BC. So as we go through each of these problems, we just have to look at the table and figure out which one of these match up, right? So HI, BC. It helps to use different colors because that makes it a little bit easier to see and so you don't get mixed up between which problem you were working on. So do the next one, JK. JK is right here. So JK, and so you want for the corresponding side to be stacked right on top because JK is on the bottom. So where its corresponding side is going to be on the top. So JK goes with DE. Okay. So now we can go through, you can go through the rest of these three on your own, but you want it to go through the table and make sure that it's stacked on top of each other. So for example, CD is not going to be corresponding to KL because those don't stack up. Make sure that the two, the side that you pick to go with what the question asked you is stacked right underneath or right on top of the other one. All right. So now that we are hopefully able to understand which sides are corresponding to each other, we can use that information to set up these proportions. If two sides correspond to each other, then we can call them proportional. They are proportional to each other. If they are proportional, that means they can be used to set up a proportion, which we will then use to solve for missing sides. Okay, so 
we have these two shapes. I'm going to label them again. Here's shape one. Here's shape two. And so again, this is one where it's a little bit difficult to tell how everything matches up. So you want to do your table. Here's A, B, C. First letter of the alphabet on shape two is D. So we have D, E, F. And this matches up. OK? So you can use this table to help you set up the proportions. Because this top row is from shape one. This bottom row is from shape two. So when you're writing your proportions, the key is to be consistent. So here's an example of a proportion that works. We have AB, because that's a side side. AB is proportional to DE. So these are the two pairs. This is the pair of corresponding sides. So this is from shape one. This is from shape two. So that means that on the other side of the equation, we need to also have a one and a two. Because we have one and two on the left, we have to have one and two on the right. So since we did A, B, and D, E, we could do B, C over E, F on the right. That's just one of the many proportions you can do. Okay, you could also do D, E over A, B equals E, F over B, C. That's fine, because that's 2, 1, 2, 1. You have to be consistent. Now another thing, another way we can also write proportions is to do 1, 1, you know, 1 over 1, 2 over 2. So A over B, A, B over B, C. So that's 1 and 1. However, that means that we need the corresponding sides to go side to side. So the corresponding side to A, B is still D, E, so it has to be next to it here. Here's 2, D, E. The corresponding side for B, C is E, F. So we have 1 over 1 equals 2 over 2. And then it's important that our corresponding sides are now next to each other. So when you are writing your proportion, the corresponding sides either need to be stacked, like A, B over D, E, or D, E over A, B. So they're stacked on top of each other. Or they need to be next to each other, like A, B, and D, E, B, C, and EF. It's very important that it's consistent and it's stacked that way. If you wrote AB over BC equals EF over DE, this is wrong because now your corresponding sides are crossed. They're not adjacent anymore. So this is an example of what we don't want. Your corresponding sides should either be next to each other or they should be on top of each other. They should be touching in your proportion. Okay, So this is where you get to use some creative freedom because there's a lot of different ways you can write these proportions to set up and solve for missing sides. So let's look at an example. Here we have find missing sides x and y by using proportions. Okay, So these don't have letters, so we can't use our trick with the letters this time. So we just need to be able to look at the sides and figure out. So what we have is they gave us these two, like these two shorter sides here and here. So we need to figure out, does 5 correspond to 15 or does 5 correspond to 21? Well, if you think about it, it's 5 and 7, 15 and 21. This is where you can kind of look at patterns. 15 is a multiple of 5. If you multiply 5 times 3, you get 15. 21 is a multiple of 7. 7 times 3 is 21. So that means you could probably guess that 5 corresponds to 15 and 7 corresponds to 21. So we can mark it. Here's 5 and 15, 7, 21, which means 10 is going to go with y because it looks like they just took this shape and we tilted it this way. So it hasn't been flipped, just turned. And then this and this go together. You can use whatever symbols you want to show that the sides are corresponding. I think using the hash marks are pretty common. When you were doing angles, you'll see using stripes. But whatever symbols you want to use, as long as you understand, OK, these two sides are proportional. OK? So we can fill out the rest of our table. 5, 15, 7 goes with 21, uh, 10 goes with y, and 12 goes with x we have our little table here. So that means when we're writing our proportions, we can use the table. We could literally, it says to find missing sides x and y, so let's find x first. We could literally 
just use this, write this as our proportion. Oh wait, no, can't, that one has y. Take this and this to use as our proportion to solve for x. Can't have two variables, because then we can't solve. So then we write these out, so it's seven over 21 equals 12 over x. Could also be flipped. We could have also done seven over 12 equals 21 over x, that's all fine. So here, after we have that, we cross multiply and we get 7x equals 21 times 12. 21 times 12 is um, 21 times 12. Let me use the decimals calculator. gives us 252. So we have 7x equals 252. So now we need to divide by 7. And we get 36. Okay, now we need to do the same thing for y. So if we really wanted to, for y, we could do 7 over 21 again. So 7 over 21 equals 10 over y, but that doesn't seem very fun. So I'm going to use a different proportion so you can see how much differently we can do it. So now let's go this way, I guess. So we have um, 7 over 10 equals 21 over y. So you can see that this would be 21 and y come from the same shape. So this was labeled 1 and 2. This would be 1 over 1, 2 over 2. And that's perfectly OK. Now we cross multiply. So we have 7y equals 21 times 10. 21 times 10 is 210. And we divide by 7 to get rid of the coefficient we end up with y equals 30. I forgot to circle the other one. Okay. So once you create the proportion, I think you all understand how to solve because this is exactly the same as direct variation with the butterfly method and all that. The only difference between our regular direct variation problems and this is that instead of getting a word problem to give you the relationship, like, oh, this washing machine washes 10 shirts in two minutes. Instead of getting a word problem, you have a picture. Okay, let's talk about angles real quick, even though we've kind of touched on it already. All corresponding angles are congruent angles. So we already said this, that even if the side lengths change in size as we shrink or grow, the angles all stay the same. So if angle A corresponds to angle B, then they are the same. So while corresponding sides get bigger or smaller when the original shape changes in size, the corresponding angles stay the same measure. So if we know that angle A and angle B are corresponding angles, if angle A is 31 degrees, angle B is also 31 degrees. They are congruent. Now you might have already noticed when we were looking up here, when we were doing this problem, that since 5 corresponds with 15 and 7 corresponds with 21, well, 5 times 3 is 15, 7 times 3 is 21, 12 times 3 is 36, and 10 times 3 is 30. So you notice how if you had taken all the side lengths in the first shape and multiplied them by 3, you would get all the side lengths in the second shape. Well, that 3, that number that you have to multiply by, is what we call the scale factor. So the scale factor is the number you multiply the original shape by to get the new shape, or you know, the first shape to get the second shape, I guess. So for example, let's say that side EF corresponds to side GH. Side EF is 10 centimeters and the scale factor is 2.5. So if we know that side EF is 10 and that the scale factor is 2.5, we can find the length of side GH by multiplying. So we will multiplying 
2.5, which is the scale factor, times 10, which is the original sine length, gives us 25, which is the new one. So this is just like in this problem, where if you have 5, that's the original, you multiply it by 3, which is the scale factor, and you get 15. So if you have the scale factor, then you are using the scale factor to multiply to get the missing shapes, or the, one, the missing sides, or the ones on the other shape. If you are trying to calculate the scale factor, then you do the opposite of multiplying, which is divide. So you calculate the scale factor by dividing two corresponding sides. So if you find the scale factor and it turns out to be greater than 1, like before when we, our scale factor was 3, that means the shape enlarges. Means that the shape is bigger. If the scale factor is smaller than 1, like 1 half or something, then that means the shape shrinks. It's getting smaller. Okay. So let's look at these here. Okay, so now we're talking about corresponding angles. So this is another one where using the letters can really help you. But you can also kind of, this one I think is easier to see. You can tell, it tells us that angle A corresponds to angle F. So here's a little angle sign with one stripe. So they want to know angle B corresponds to what side on the second shape. So this is one, this is two, right? It's either going to be G or J, right? Well, G comes after F in the alphabet, just like B comes after A in the alphabet. So that gives us our clue that this is going to go with G. So the rest we can just fill in, you know, since we're just going clockwise. That would be 3, so 4, and then the 15. Lots of different ways to show congruent angles. Okay, so A corresponds to angle F, angle B corresponds to angle G, J corresponds to E, and angle I corresponds to angle D. Last but not least, we have the scale factor problems. They tell us the scale factor is 3, and they give us all of the measurements, all the side lengths on shape number 1. Okay. Well, so we need to figure out which of these sides go together. Same thing, you can go either way. Either you can look at it, because you're like, okay, this is the smallest angle here. So these probably go together. Well, and then these kind of look the same. Like this side and this side look like they have the same relationship as this side and this side. So I feel like these two go together. Then this goes together. Oh, it looks like it hasn't been turned or tilted or anything, okay? A, B, C, D is going to be the same thing as E, F, G, H. They're corresponding. Okay, so that means that E, F corresponds to A, B. E, H corresponds to A, D. H, G corresponds to D, C. And F, G corresponds to B, C. So you can use this because we have to know what to multiply the scale factor by to get EF, for example. So EF corresponds to AB. Now AB is 3 inches. So in order to use the scale factor, we're taking the shape 1 side length, shape 1 side length, and then we're going to multiply it by the scale factor. and that will give us the shape 2 side length. All right. Let me move this part up a little bit. Okay. So that means that if AB is 3, or is 3 inches, then you're going to multiply that by the scale factor of 3 to get EF. So 3 times 3 is 9. EH corresponds to AD. AD is 2 inches, and then we multiply that by 3. 2 times 3 is 6. So when you have the scale factor, all you're doing is taking the original, so the first side length on shape 1, and then you multiply it by the scale factor. So HG goes with DC. DC is 5 inches, 
multiply by the scale factor, and so on. So when you have the scale factor, you're multiplying. When you're trying to find the scale factor, you're dividing. Okay. So I want to quickly go over one of the practice problems on the practice sheet. So this would be, you know, in, under our second nine weeks, writing inequalities practice. Or sorry, oof, similar figures practice. I'm going to go through number one and number two with you so you can understand or see this a little bit more in action. Okay, So on the similar figures practice, it says that the diagram in number one is we're also going to use this for question number two. Okay, So it's asking us which proportion can be used to determine the value of x. So to figure out the proportion, you really want to come up with your table. Okay, So you need to figure out your shape one, your shape two, you need to figure out which of these sides corresponds to which side on shape two. Okay, well, one of these is shorter than the other, right? 2.5 looks like it's shorter than six. Well, here's 21, here's x. x looks like it's shorter than 21. So we can guess pretty well that six corresponds to 21 and 2.5 corresponds with x. So we can write our table. Here's six, here's 2.5. They're the same shape, because this is shape 1, this is shape 2. 6, 2.5, 6 corresponds with 21, 2.5 corresponds with x. Okay, Because you can use this to see what the proportions are supposed to be. right? So for example, 6 over 21 equals 2.5 over x, that's valid. 6 over 2.5 equals 21 over x, that's also valid. So when you have the table, that allows you to more easily look at these answer choices and figure out which one is done correctly, right? So let's look through these one by one. Answer choice A has 6 over 2.5. 6 over 2.5, so this is 1, 1. That's fine. Then we have x over 21. That's 2, 2, except so we went from left to right. 6 over 2.5, so that means that it should be going left to right on the bottom too. So this should be 21 over x because remember corresponding sides either have to be stacked together or next to each other. 6 and x are not corresponding. 6 and 2.5 are not corresponding. So this is not drawn properly. This is a wrong <laughs> proportion. Consistency is really important with these proportions. Look at number 2. We have 6 over 2.5. You erase this. And do this in another color. We have 6 over 2.5, again, so that's 1 over 1. Then we have 21 over x, that's 2 over 2. And 6 over 21, these are corresponding sides. They're next to each other. So b is a correct answer, but let's go ahead and look at the other two so you can see. Okay? So we have another one. We have 6 over 21. This is 1 over 2. But then we have x over 2.5. That's 2 over 1. This is already no good because it has to be consistent. If we have 1 on top, 2 on the bottom here, we need to have 1 on top, 2 on the bottom here. We don't. Last one. We have 6 over x. OK, this is already wrong. Because we have 1 and 2, but 6 and x are not corresponding sides. That's no good. And you can also look at this across. 6 and 2.5 are not um, corresponding sides. 6 and x are not corresponding sides. 6 and 21 are the corresponding sides, and they're crossed like this. That's why this is wrong. 6 and 20, you know, this is wrong. Okay, so hopefully that allows you to see, so that makes B the right answer, definitely. So this allows you to see kind of what we're doing when it's multiple choice. And this, using the table and numbering your shapes allows you to see when it's done right and when it's done wrong. Okay, well, so then question two wants us, wants us to find out what is the value of X. Okay, so 
we can use the correct proportion or you could come up with your own if you want to but I mean they already have it might as well use it so we that's our proportion we already found that to be the correct answer we butterfly 6x equals 21 times 2.5 we solve it so 21 times 2.5 is 52.5 oh sorry it's 21 times 25 it's 525 oh it is 2.5 <laughs> it's okay no, wait sorry 52.5 then hmm, throwing myself off equals 6x then get rid of the coefficient so we divide by 6 get x equals whatever 52.5 divided by 6 is turns out to be 8.75 this is where you need to practice with the gridable so we write that in there and then we want to bubble it in 8.75 so this worksheet each of these questions is like that you're going to have to look at the portions to see which ones are set up correctly and then once you have the right one you can either use the right one from that question or come up with your own to find what that missing side is okay so hopefully me working that one it helps you now you can use the trick with the letters and matching them up except on number five you can't really do that but the nice thing on number five is that I think it's pretty easy to tell that this figure has been tilted so hopefully that makes it easier for you to figure out which sides are corresponding all right. All right. That is about it. So I hope this video was helpful and helps you get through the practice as well. And I will see you in class.